Hi everyone! In today's video we're going to be taking a look at a new edition from the 3.11 release, GSAP Context. So Context allows us to collect up groups of animations, whether those animations are tweens or timelines or scroll triggers, and then we can revert all of those animations in one go back to their original state. This is a handy addition for everyone, but especially if you're working with React. We'll go into that in more detail in a bit, but first let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at the handy new control method that's making all of this possible. So revert's basically a super fast way to kill an animation and also reset the element to its original state, the state that it was in before the animation started. Now this doesn't sound too revolutionary. We've got other control methods like kill that you might have used before, um, but what makes revert different? Why is this useful? So here we have two little boxes. We're going to animate the one on the right, and then when we click this button, our goal is to reset the animated box back to its original state so that it matches the one on the left. So as if the animation never happened in the first place. Let's try to kill the animation first. So we can see if we call tween.kill, this doesn't match. We can see that the animation itself was killed. It's no longer playing, but the inline styles that we added with the animation, they're still there. And the animation's left in the state that it was in when we killed it. So this is ideal for a lot of use cases, but for our goal, it's not really working. So effectively, we want to reverse the animation up to the beginning and then kill it. Now that looks more like it, awesome. But the inline styles added by the animation are still there. So a lot of the time this isn't an issue, but it can mess with styling or future animations. So let's take a little look at revert. So we're gonna call revert on this tween here and we can see our animation is going. And if we go up to this button and click it, bam, back to the start, nice and matching, awesome. And if we check out the inline styles, we can see that the inline styles that were added by the animation have been cleared out. So this is leaving our original background color style where it is. Excellent. So what's this got to do with context? Well, calling revert on one tween is easy enough, right? We just did that. But what if we've got a whole bunch of animations? So here we've got two independent tweens and then we've got a timeline which is controlling another two tweens. And it would get really annoying to have to assign every single animation to a variable so that you can keep track of them and revert them later. So this is where GSAP context saves the day. We're gonna create a context and then we can drop all of our animations in there. And now GSAP records any tweens, timelines, or scroll triggers inside this function. And then when we click this button, we can call context revert to revert all of them in one go. In React 18, apps that are wrapped in strict mode run some extra checks in development. So these checks make sure that your effects are properly cleaning up after themselves. If we look in this code pen, we can see that the console log fires twice. Now, basically what's going on here is that React is remounting each component. The DOM and state themselves get preserved, but all effects are gonna fire and then they're gonna clean up and then they're gonna fire again. Now this can cause unexpected results with from tweens because they're immediately rendered. So it's really important to handle this behavior correctly. Now, if we take a look at the guidance on React's blog, they say that we should use the cleanup function to reset any animated element to its initial state. So you can see where revert and context are gonna come in really handy here. So we've just got a couple of tweens here. That's easy enough to clean up individually if you like. We can just call revert on each tween. And then if we refresh this, we can see that our from tweens are working as expected again, awesome. Um, so if you don't want to worry about keeping track of multiple animations, maybe you've got more than a couple of tweens, we can wrap all of our animations in a context and then revert it in one go. So this is nice and simple. Another really handy thing with GSAP's context and React or any other component-based system is the optional scope parameter. So it's pretty common for React developers, especially to create refs for every element that they want to animate. And this can get a bit repetitive. 
But if you're certain that those children are going to be part of this component, you can cut down on the refs by passing the root element ref in and then just using selector text inside context. So this scope parameter is like saying, hey GSAP, any selector text inside this function should only find descendants of that particular element or ref. Just a nice handy way to cut down on your code a little bit and scope your animations to a component. GSAP context records any tween or scroll trigger or timeline created while this function is executing. But what if we need to call a function later? Let's say we're adding an interaction like a click event. Interactions are very useful for animation. Um, so we need to be able to get this right. So when the click event fires off here, the context functions already run. So this new purple circle tween here doesn't get recorded. If I call revert now, the tween just keeps running. So this isn't really ideal. We need to tell context about this tween. So we'll add a new method to the context and we can call this method anytime that we want. And we're gonna name it our purple animation. And then we'll pop the tween in there. And now we can wire up our event handler to call this method. And now when we click the button, everything gets reverted properly. Brilliant stuff. So you can add animations to a context outside of this main context function too. So if your animations are all scattered around your code base instead of just in one file, you can still keep track of them all in one context. So we'll add the box animation here, and then we're also gonna add a named method for the purple animation so that we can call it later. And then bam, all grouped and revertible, lovely stuff. And that's it for today. If you're working with React, we've got some handy guides over at greensock.com forward slash React. If you get stuck with anything, make sure to pop into our forums. Catch you next time, folks. Until then, have fun and happy tweening.